Hi guys, how are you? I hope you're doing very good. Um, the main goal of this video is to learn that there are many different approaches to time series analysis and, and forecasting. And we're gonna see one of them, one of them based on, on machine learning. Why? Well, because uh, by now we know quite a lot of machine learning and it's not very difficult for us to apply what we know to, to do time series analysis and, and forecasting and that's that's the main reason but if we wanted to analyze time series and learn about forecasting from from scratch then we would learn a lot of different methods a lot of different approaches and each of them has some uh, advantages and, and and drawbacks and with this video i just wanted to to let you know that we're gonna do only one of those approaches okay the, the one based on, on machine learning why if there are so many why have i given the title to this presentation two different approaches well the, the main reason is that most of the approaches that do not use um, machine learning start in in, in start in the same way and since we're not going to talk much about these different approaches we're gonna just give a flavor of what they look like we're just going to explain how how these approaches start how how they how how they start analyzing any time series and and basically the way they do it is they start by decomposing the time series into three different components. Some people talk about four components, but, but we're gonna keep it simple here. Let's talk about three components. And these are called the trend, the seasonal component, and what is left, the, the residual. Uh, so if we have a time series that maybe looks like this, the, the trend is the long-term evolution of the time series, okay? Ignoring short-term fluctuations. So here the trend would be uh, roughly uh, upwards and, and almost linear, okay? If we ignore all these um, short-term cycles, we would get this long-term uh, pattern, and that is the trend. The seasonal component refers to cyclical patterns in the short term and over a fixed and already known um, uh, time period. Like for instance, uh, every day or every hour or every month of the year. So if you remember the, the time series we saw about temperature, it, it has a clear daily seasonal component because every day we observe similar patterns okay that that would be the seasonal component and if we remove the trend and the seasonal component from the original time series what is left we call it the residual or or the noise and and most methods that that do not use machine learning start with this with this decomposition of, of any time series on on these three components. Uh, uh, an example that we will use over the presentation of, of this unit is this time series that shows the number of airline passengers in, in thousands over the years that go from 1949 to 19. 60 and this is a monthly time series okay this is the original time series here at the top is the original time series as, as well and and here we've decomposed this time series into a trend component the long-term evolution of the time series the seasonal component which in this case is yearly and it shows that people tend to fly more over the summer and less over the winter and then what is left which is the residual and uh, this is another example uh, that you can find in this book which you can access for free and, it, and it's really good and um, here we've got an original time series this would be the trend so the main purpose of this figure is to to show that the trend has not to be linear by any means it can be pretty complex it can even have cycles over long 
long term uh, cyclical patterns. And then there is the seasonal component, which is over a time period that we know a priori, like days, months, weeks, whatever, and what is left would be the noise. So if we added these three components, we would reconstruct the original time series. There are also decompositions that are not additive, but multiplicative, but, but the general uh, concepts are, are the same. And what we're going to do in, in this course is to use machine learning to try to analyze and forecast time series. And this is a completely different approach. And as usual in, in machine learning, we should start by identifying variables that may be useful to, to predict future observations. Okay, that's uh, variables that, that correlate with, with the output that we want to, to predict. And some variables that are often useful in time series are the time that we're plotting here. Remember that the dependent variable, we, we call it x in, in time series. This may be confusing, but that's the general notation in time series. So what we're plotting here is, is x um, against time. Okay? And if we use time as an input variable, that is often useful because it helps us uh, capture linear trends. Okay? Uh, we can also use uh, powers of time that help us capture more complex trends. And uh, another type of variable that we will see is extremely useful, usually, in time series analysis is what is called lags of the variable x that we aim to predict. What, what are these? Well, lags are the values of the same variable we want to predict, but in the past. So uh, x at t minus 1 would be the variable at the previous uh, time period. x of t minus 2, which would be the x with, with lag 2, or with 2 lags, it would be the value of, of the variable we aim to predict two periods before, okay, and so on and so forth. And then in machine learning, we could include pretty much any other variable that we deem useful to predict uh, the, the variable that we want to predict. And what we're going to do is to follow the same approach that we already know and we're familiar with. Basically, what we're going to do is to, to train a model to train or to train different models, estimate the test error of these different models, see how they do, how well or bad they do uh, on predicting new data, and then select the one that predicts the best in, in new situations. So that, that is pretty much the same that we, we already know, but only applied to time series. So with this, we finished this uh, video and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing you in, in the next one. Okay, see you, see you on the next video. Bye bye.